Now is the winter of our discontent. Made glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim, visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front, And now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of our fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I, that I'm not made for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I, that am rudely stamped, and want love's majesty to strut before wanting, ambling nymph. I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, sent before my time into this world, scarce half made up, that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy my shadow and descant on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I can not prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. <laughs> oh, and if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle and false and treacherous, then this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a, a prophecy that says that G of Edward's heir, the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here Clarence comes.